Um, so yeah, I worked. Um, I worked with Nigel um, on a technology project, and I kind of didn't ever mean to become the geek girl in the room, but it, it has become who I am. And these days, I'm a professional director, and I've discovered that on boards, basically, for those of you who are also directors, you'll know that there are so many slots on a board. And so when you're recruiting, you know, there's one that's been kept aside for whoever's going to chair the, the Risk and Audit Committee, and, you know, there's often one for the lawyer. And um, just recently I've discovered that I fill a very specific slot. And so some of you around Wellington will know Helen Anderson. Um, Helen and I can't be in the same room at the same time. It's an important thing to understand because you can only have one geeky blonde person on a board, right? Um, so Helen and I are the same type. Um, some of you may know Lorraine Witten. It goes the same for Lorraine Witten and I. So Lorraine and I can't be in the same room. Neither can Lorraine and Helen. It, it's, it is quite binary. Um, the other one is um, Sharon Hunter. So Sharon and I replace each other on boards. Um, now she's much prettier. Um, but, you know, it's an important thing to understand. And it, and it wasn't one that I understood until I made that leap to becoming a professional director that we all have these slots. So so I am your technology geeky person on the board. I'm the one who understands social media, um, digital marketing, and how to make sure that your technology rollout miraculously comes in under budget and on time, and preferably does what you hoped it was going to do. It turns out about 12% of those actually happen. Um, so, so my very last, um, well, sort of second to last, actually, on to enterprise that I did was a, a kids' computer games business. And just recently, I gave myself a new Twitter handle. So for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. Like, normal transmission will resume in a second. But I had three and a half thousand nine-year-old boys following my old persona on Twitter. And I got really, really sick of lol um, and kind of, you know, ta-ta for nows and things. So, um, so these days, I've kind of moved on from being in an operational role in technology, and my name um, means honeybee in Greek, and as well as that, I'm a beekeeper. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, I tweet about beekeeping. <laughs> um, but I'm also deeply interested in, in technology and women in the economy. So you probably know this, but you know those of you who have grandchildren coming up, um, I already have my first one, I did give my children advice on how to name my grandchild. And, um, and you can see here that 5.3% of American CEOs are called John. So I thoroughly recommend that if any of you have girl grandchildren coming up, you encourage your children to call her John. All right. Um, it will more than triple her chances of ever becoming a CEO. Um, as you can see, David's not a bad name either. You know, so you could suggest David, um, Davida, or something's just not going to work, right? So it has to be a boy's name. Um, Robert is okay. James is okay. Michael's okay. William's okay. And when you kind of look at that, all women put together in the U.S. Um, get to 4.1 percent. So if they'd just been called David or John, that have done a whole lot better. Um, interestingly, you know, New Zealand is way down in terms of international comparisons on women on boards. So what this does, and it's very interesting, the OECD has put out a number of, of very compelling reports, and particularly um, the APAC reports are interesting, on the improvement and profitability of companies that just have even one woman on that board. Um, so even just putting one woman on the board, um, Within the APAC area, the OECD says it gives you a 26% uplift in profit. All right, so for those of you who go, you know, I don't want to have to do this diversity thing, it's a complete pain having to put one of those blonde girls in this room and there's only, you know, only allowed one, um, think about your dividends. All right, so your likelihood of improving your dividend stream goes up massively with the diversity of the board that you have. Um, so I want to talk very quickly about um, social media, because many of you probably don't use it, but I do, and um, I think I'm not a super user, because compared to the next generation, I'm really not. But what's interesting here is that basically Facebook is where it's at. So when people start to talk to you and the companies that you're in, whether you're at the board level or whether you're working in those companies, and they say to you, we need to have a social media strategy, the very first question you should be asking them is, are we on Facebook? 
Um, Google Ads used to work, and in the old days they worked really well, and nowadays they hardly work at all and they're incredibly expensive. So you can't read a report from 10 years ago about social media and go, yeah, that'll work for us. Um, and what you could see here too is that Facebook covers virtually every demographic in terms of income. Um, the other thing I think that you should know, shock horror, is that women are on the internet a lot more than men. Um, it shouldn't surprise any of the women in the room, but it will surprise a lot of the men, I find, because they often don't realise how much women in their lives, just as women have always been the social glue in families, women are still the social glue in corporations or the social glue in their families or in community groups or in their lives in general, which means that women have taken to the internet with far greater pace than men have. And so if you are doing a marketing strategy that involves anything on the internet and you are marketing it to men, you are probably wasting your money. Shall I say that again? If you are marketing to men on the internet, you are probably wasting your money. All right, and I can, like, I'm a data freak, so I have doubted this every way possible. Um, the, oh, if we jump, oh, in fact, we could show it on this one as well. The only social network that is not dominated by women is LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is primarily, and for those of you who are here in the Skilled Migrants Program, you know, you'll know, hopefully someone's talked to you about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is primarily about seeking work or linking to other people for work. That is the main activity that goes on on LinkedIn. Um, and work can mean contract work, not just work work, employment work. But, you know, I think what we'll see in the next couple of years is women's involvement in LinkedIn skyrocket past men's. So again, if there is a reason that you really do only want to market to men on the internet, then I would suggest that LinkedIn ads are where you should go because you can target those ads much, much more clearly to professional men in particular than pretty much any other network. Um, I've been working with a couple of construction companies and as soon as they moved to Pinterest, um, they've had their, their sales improve quite markedly. And what's interesting there, and you know, so cover your ears slightly, but basically Pinterest is full of women and gay men, or men who are particularly interested in home decorating. And, um, and I say that what's fascinating about it is that two things, it has become now the number one site in the world where people choose their holiday destination. All right. So for all you men who think you have a say in where the family holiday is, you're right. Um, so women are basically, they go on Pinterest, they look at photos, they choose that destination. So those of you who have been married for a little while will understand exactly how this works, right? Um, but interesting enough, when I often go look at travel agency sites, they're not aimed at women. They don't think, gosh, I'm more likely to have a woman come to this site to look for a holiday than a man. They think, I'll just market to everyone. The problem with marketing to everyone is that people don't recognise that it's for them. So, um, the other thing that Pinterest is the number one place for is home decorating. So if I'm looking to build a house or I'm looking to renew the lighting or I'm looking for an architect or any of those things, the most likely place now for a woman to go to look for that is in Pinterest. And we all know that the person who makes most of the decisions about home decorating, in fact, is women. So if you're a construction company and you're marketing online and you're not doing it on Pinterest, I'd again say that you're wasting your money. Um, shock horror, women are more on mobile um, than men, whether that's tablets or whether that's cell phones. Um, again, interestingly, the Internet of Things, we're here, so you can see that red dot, that is the Internet of Things, that is how many connected devices we currently have. Um, anyone here wearing a Fitbit, you know? Okay, so, so me too. So there's a few of us, we're, we have an internet connected, for those of you who don't know what that is, internet connected pedometer. Or right now, you know, I'm giving a talk coming up on the, the quantified self. You can pretty much have a detection device anywhere on the outside or even the inside of your body now that measures everything about you, you know, from the biome that lives um, in your digestive tract through to whether or not you're absorbing the medication that you took through to your heartbeat, your sleep, everything else. All of those things are internet connected. And what we're seeing is that in the next few years, we'll be up to, you know, 18 billion connected devices all around us. And, you know, I think many people don't realise that the beginning of the internet has barely begun. 
we are about to enter a major revolution in what the internet does. And so my quick plea is that for New Zealand, you know, we are falling way behind. Um, Jersey has a gigabyte a second to every home. In Roseneath, I can currently get 17 megabytes. And, you know, when we think about that, I'm, I'm 20 minute walk from town. I'm not going to be able to get any kind of broadband, what I consider to be what's internationally called broadband. So what we call UFB is what the rest of the world calls broadband. I think it's really important for us to understand. So one of the biggest issues New Zealand's going to have in the next few years is if we don't have the infrastructure in our internet, we are going to fall way behind as all of these devices come online. So 52% of gamers are women. I bet you didn't know that. Uh, so, you know, having worked as a very senior woman in the gaming industry, and, and, and I still work internationally as a consultant in the gaming industry, it's really important for us to think about that. The way women play is very different to men, but their spend is more, which is really interesting. Um, I love this. This is a quote from my daughter, because I said, you know, do you think we should get an Oculus Rift? And she goes, well, it's more immersive, but it looks stupider. And I thought, number one, they are marketing this to boys. No girl is going to do this in her bedroom. <laughs> right? So I'm working on some VR tech at the moment, but the one thing they've got to do is stop girls thinking it looks stupider. Right? Um, important thing to take from this one is that women pirate more downloadable TV than men. Okay. Um, interestingly, too, is that the greatest pirates are those who spend the most, which is a really important lesson in New Zealand where we make it very difficult for people to legally buy content internationally. And even this morning I was listening to national radio and they were talking about making it illegal for people to use VPNs. At the moment I can tell you now that I use a VPN as the only way I can give my money to international salespeople who sell the content I want. The moment they make my VPN illegal, I will be forced to pirate it, which I have the technology and the know-how to do. And that is the fascinating thing, is those of us who know how to pay for it internationally are also the ones who have a choice about whether we pirate or not. And so we have to think very carefully when we live in an economy that is smaller than Melbourne, whether we want to lock New Zealanders out of international content, which is what we seem to be on a track to do. Um, so women spend all the money in a household, shock horror, you guys all know that, right? And yet we still design our marketing as if women are not in the equation. Uh, I got this one completely wrong around um, girl Lego. I thought it was the lamest, stupidest thing I'd ever seen and they cannot produce enough of this. So this kind of girls play salon Lego, which I thought was going to be a dead duck, just walks out of the stores. But interestingly, 90% of creative directors at the top 100 marketing agencies in the world are blokes. And we normally will work with people we know and market to the kind of people like us. Um, I'm actually going to run past that. Under Armour, I was going to show you an ad from Under Armour, but I haven't got enough time. But Under Armour are becoming the world's biggest apparel seller in the world. And their number one strategy is to sell sports gear to women. Isn't that interesting? And they just bought a company called My Fitness Pal, which some of the women in the room will know because it's mostly women who use, which is basically a food tracker that you can use on your iPad. Um, and they saw that the more they could engage women in their business, and they used to be a boxing company, and the more that they've engaged women, the higher their profitability. Um, so. I was in, um, in, the, in, a, um, in the market for a car just recently, and I'll tell you the sorry story of buying my car, but, um, but I did come here in Wellington, I knew exactly what car I wanted, and, um, and I went in here, and I can just tell you that m me and my best friend at a car yard on a Sunday afternoon, anyone here who's in the car business will know that we are not doing that for fun. Uh, do you think we could find someone to talk to us? Ah, oh, no. So I gave up on that particular car yard. I drove to Palmerston North. I'm serious. I negotiated very hard until the poor young man just about cried. And then I said, I'm going to field days. I'll get back to you. And at field days, I got a fantastic deal on my brand new car, which I then flew to Auckland and picked up and drove home. 
which for me was a lot more pleasurable than dealing with the guy here who refused to talk to my best friend and I in a kayak on a Sunday afternoon when I'd rather be gardening. Um, I take one look at this ad and I know that a jag is not for me. One look. So if any of you are in the jag business, you might want to think about whether or not really truly the men in this household have made the decision about what car they're buying. Because if it's true that only the men have made the decision, this is a perfect ad out of the Coro magazine. But if not, they have wasted their money yet again. Uh, did you notice the hairy hand on this? They didn't put some Cody's hairy, grotty hand on this. They put a girl's hand on this. They put a flower on this. This is one of the best-selling technology items in the world, and Apple isn't stupid. Interestingly, Hermes Apple, I don't know if you know how much these things go for, but this is the new Apple Watch with something like a $2,000 strap put on it. This is definitely marketed to women. The jawbone up, where they've taken an old bit of, of Fitbit technology, and I basically said to the guy who showed it to me, I'm not putting anything that ugly on my body. And they listened, and now they've put out, these are pedometers, smart pedometers that also measure your sleep, measure your blood pressure, and measure whether you've spent enough of the day going uphill. Uh, there's a whole site called Fash Nerd, and this one on the bottom right is a USB cable designed as a bracelet. Walks out the door. All right? I don't know how annoying the rest of you find it when you can never find those USB cables. I know none of the guys in the room have any idea what I'm talking about, but if you looked at my handbag, you'd get a terrible fright anyway, right? So if I can find a cable faster, I'm happy. Um, so what do women want? They want mobile first, because we're all on mobile devices. I hate it when I go to buy something off a website and it doesn't work on my mobile. This is really important. 80% of people go on the internet to buy, and most of you have websites that blather on about yourselves and make it really, really difficult for me to buy anything. You should have a big buy now button, as big as you can make it, right up the middle of the front, and preferably green. I've done lots of A-B testing on this. And you wouldn't believe it, if you put a sparkle on that green, I sell even more. Little shimmery little sprite, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, you, women are global customers, right? I'll buy that USB cable internationally. This morning I bought myself some shoes from, from Europe. I bought myself an outfit from Australia. We want authentic conversations. We don't want to be talked to like we've been tacked on to some other conversation. Oh, we used to sell these cards to boys and now we'll, we'll, we'll show you with a family or you with some cupcakes in the back. Don't make me vomit. You know, um, we want transparency, we want to know that it works. I, I, I'm just going to tell you briefly about my car before I finish because I did all this research, right, and I'm a greenie and so I looked around on the emissions, you'll know exactly where this is going. Uh, I used to drive an Audi and I decided that I needed something a little more fuel efficient and because I'm a beekeeper I have to have a station wagon because I'm always lugging all kinds of crap around and um, so I, I buy the brand new Passat. I know. Unbelievable how angry I am. And I'm angry, like, I've still got great fuel efficiency. I have to tell you, I, have, I, I spend about a quarter what I used to on petrol in my Audi. So I know that. I want to know the horsepower of this thing because I might have to tow stuff. So when you sell to me, you sell to me based on the horsepower, you sell to me based on its capacity to carry farming equipment, and you sell to me based on its ability to also look good. And I want it to be green. And so I'm completely furious because I didn't get my transparency. If you do these things, your sales will go through the roof because women will know you're selling to them. And in the meantime, while you're selling to men, you're probably not selling as much as you should. Thanks. We've probably got time for a couple of questions. People got some... No men put Go their on. hand up, because oh, no, you're no, no. all going to be Questions, tuku. comments, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Um, what I see is that um, one of the big changes I probably have seen in the last, you know, coming back to Nigel, you know, I've been in technology for like 25 years, and I'd say one of the big changes I've seen in the last 10 globally is 
product managers being much more important than the technology manager. And I think that that's very new in New Zealand. I'm still I'm working with a couple of companies that are just trying to get their head around what a product manager does. And so when you look at things like those jawbone ones or the um, fashion nerd products or um, you know some of the really smart products that have been designed specifically for women, those are coming out of international markets that have really, really good product designers. And then the marketing kind of is much easier because you've designed a product for that market. Whereas I see in New Zealand, we pretty much come up with some brilliant idea and then we work out how the hell to flog it off. And I think that's about 10 times as hard. And so I think hoping that New Zealand will catch up with that. You know, someone like Icebreaker, I think, has done product management really well. Um, I'll tell you who else, and it's a real under-the-radar one, but Ansco. I think Ansco is a phenomenal meat company in terms of really doing innovation. I think they're one of the most innovative companies in New Zealand. But um, when we look around, we often reward the wrong things for innovation. We say, well, that's a brilliant idea, rather than that's a market that desperately wants something. That's, that's my 10 cents worth. Um, look, I find that's a great question. Um, so I have, I have two children. I have a son who wanted to dance and be a professional basketball player. And when he first wanted to dance, um, I kind of, I mean, I wanted to support him, but I was worried about how it might go at school. And luckily, I know John's here, luckily, and Suzanne, yeah, um, so luckily there were a few boys in the community that we lived in up at Clifton Terrace School where Deirdre Tarrant was a parent and there were a bunch of these boys that could take themselves off to ballet after school. And it was fantastic. And Rupert, is a, he's a big guy. And I remember we took him to see the Queensland Ballet because they had a six foot seven principal and because he'd always been told he wouldn't be able to dance because he was too tall. And um, he hasn't ended up being a dancer. He's a filmmaker and he's made a lot of award winning, uh, winning music videos and he is completely, you know, he's creative. Um, he, yeah, he makes films, he's won a BAFTA, he's done all this amazing stuff. On the other hand, I have a daughter who at the moment is agonising about, you know, between maths and chemistry and which way she might go. And, um, and I find it, you know, I, she, she also danced, but it wasn't really her. And I think it's so important that we encourage kids to not, like, to break out of those specific gender roles. Um, if I hadn't had a mother who was painfully feminist, I would never have done what I've done with my life, you know, and there were times where I used to cringe and go, oh, can't I just blend in? Um, but, you know, those, um, those wonderful experiences of actually being the only girl on a rugby team means that for my whole career where I've been the only woman leading a team of engineers, it's been great. Um, where I've been the only woman leading a team of software developers. At one point I had 140 guys and six women report to me. And, um, and I think that experience of not being quite so gender bound, you know, I've always been a woman, I can't change that. But I don't, um, I don't believe I'm stuck in any particular gender roles, and I think we have to give that to our girls. And I just recently gave a, a talk at a girls' high school about that. You know, that for me, one of the best things too about a girls-only education was that I got to be captain of everything, which is so hard in a co-ed school even now. So, and very last bit. One of the things I've found most depressing, I suppose, about the internet, because I love most of what it's given us, um, is the sexualisation of children. And that I, I think you can't separate gender norms right through to the continuum of sexualisation of children. And so, so long as we force girls to be pretty and good and skinny and sweet and not speak up, that allows or any other kind of sexual violence or violence against them to occur as well. And I'm not meaning that all girls should be raised to be stroppy, but we're going to keep them a lot safer if they are. So, thank you. Thank you.